Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're talking about Adobe's After Effects, and I want to show you how you can create this very cool animation that's inspired by the video game Doom. If you've played this game on PC, PlayStation 4, or Xbox One, you'll probably recognize this screen looking very similar to the loading screen. And as soon as I saw it when I was playing the game, I thought to myself, that's a very cool element that I should be able to recreate pretty faithfully using some of my favorite rampant design tools elements. All right, now before we get rolling, I do want to talk about the elements that we're going to be working with and where you'll be able to find them on the rampant design tools website if you decide that there's something that you want to add to your collection. What we're going to do is head to our style effects drop down. Let's come down to visual effects. And the elements that I'm going to be working with here are from the smoke category and the embers category. Now, as you can see on my desktop, I'm using the 4K smoke element number 21. And I'm using something that I've called new embers. But I also have a folder here where I have a whole bunch of the rampant 4K embers elements that I have downloaded from this package here. Because I want to talk about exactly how I came up with my embers look in just a second. Now something else that I do want to point out here, I'm just going to hide Chrome for a second here, is that on the Mac I have the ability to come in and to preview all of these elements. On Windows so obviously you'll go through, double click on each one of them, call them up in either QuickTime or a player of your choice like Switch to get a look at what each one of these elements looks like. Now one huge advantage to these elements is that they have alpha channels with them. So when I call this element up, although it might look like it's on a white background, there's our embers right there, it's actually not. This white represents the fact that this element is transparent. Now, for our tutorial, we're not going to be using the transparency. But one thing I do want to point out with this is that it can be a little bit difficult to see the elements, especially once you start getting into the smoke elements. So is there a better way to preview these elements? Well, there is. I want to talk for a second about the Rampant Previewer, a fantastic application for iOS devices that you can download. And it's a super tiny app. And once you have it on your device, you can use it to preview just about every element across the entire Rampant Design Tools product line. Super quick, super simple. All it requires is a Wi-Fi connection to preview the elements. And you can quickly get in, much like I did, to choose element 21 from the smoke category. You can then just hop onto your rampant drive, or if you happen to purchase it as a download, you can download the elements, find the one you want super quick, and be ready to work with it almost right away. Now, I did mention the fact that I have this special embers element here that I actually created for this tutorial. Now, how did I get it and create it? Well, what I'm going to do is just head into After Effects for a second here. I'm just going to import some multiple files. We're going to head to the embers elements on the desktop. I'm just going to bring everything in. Okay. And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be working in 1920 by 1080, I'm not going to create a composition based on one of these elements. I'm just going to create one just like this. I'm going to take all the elements, simply drag them and drop them into my timeline here. Now, something else that I should have done before I did that is I'm going to right click on one of my elements. I'm going to come to interpret footage because I actually want to disable the alpha channel on all of these elements. Now, once I do it for the first one, I can simply hit Command, Option, and C, Control, Alt, and C for all my Windows friends. We can now select all the other elements and Command, Option, and V, Control, Alt, and V to paste that down onto all of the other elements. So you'll now see that the alpha channel has been ignored. Now, why would I want to ignore the alpha channel? Because I much prefer working with transfer modes as opposed to alpha channels. Because once the elements start crossing each other, using transfer modes is going to create a very cool, almost super bright element that it's not going to do if we're doing it with alpha channels. Now, all I'm going to do here, just for the purposes of what we're doing and to show this to you, is I'm going to change the transfer mode to add for all of these elements. Now, you'll see if I jump down, we get some pretty crazy embers action happening with all of these elements. So this is how I basically got in and created my one new embers element for me to work with. So this is a very cool concept to keep in mind is that even though once you make your purchase of, let's just use embers as the example, and let's say you get you know, 120 different embers elements, you're actually getting an infinite number of embers elements because you can get in and create you know, a new element with two elements, three elements, 10 elements, 20 elements, there's really just an unlimited possibility that you can get in 
and create. Okay, so let's just remove all this because it is time to get rolling. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to import from the desktop here my smoke. Now with the smoke with element 21, what I actually had done was that element was a quite long element. So what I did was I just got in and shortened it up a little bit. Just that instead of it being, you know, a minute and a half long, it's only about 10 seconds long. Now what I'm also going to do here, just for the sake of being able to keep track of our time code, I'm just going to reset the time code to zero here. There we go. Now one thing with this element you'll notice is that it kind of dissipates right about there. And I think what I want to do is I want to just stretch this right down to the end here. So with our element selected, let's head up to our time category in the layer drop down. I'm going to come to time stretch. And because I know the length of my composition, I'm just going to tell After Effects that I want to make this element exactly 10 seconds long. It'll figure out the stretch factor. We're going to do it from the end point and say go. And now this element stretches all the way down to the end just the way that I want it to. Okay, very nice. Now let's bring that embers element in as well. Let's just go import file. And I'm going to grab the embers element. I'm just going to say open. Again, we're going to drag it and drop it right on top of that smoke element. Now, of course, there is no alpha channel with this. Remember, transfer modes is how we're going to be doing everything. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that with the doom element that we are creating, I'm going to be doing this as a black and white element. So let's get in and let's make this element black and white. What we're going to do is I'm just going to type in hue saturation. Again, standard effect inside of After Effects. I'm going to take this, drag it and drop it down. Just take the saturation right out, just like that. Okay. Now you might be thinking that the embers are starting to look a little bit gray, but what's important to keep in mind is that once I add these as an additive transfer mode, as soon as they pass in front of the gray smoke, they're immediately going to get even brighter. Very cool. Okay. Now, the next element challenged me a little bit. Now, the element that I'm talking about is that circular grid that we had going across the screen because creating a grid inside of After Effects is fairly straightforward if we're just talking about creating a lined horizontal and vertical grid. But the grid from the opening animation of the game was a little bit different because it was actually created just with little circles that made up the grid. Almost where the grid lines cross, there was a little circle. So the grid lines disappeared and these circles were put in in their place. And the challenge for me was to figure out a quick and simple way to do this without using a third party effect. And I actually did. And I thought it was pretty clever how I came up with it because it's using an effect that I use all the time. And the effect that I'm talking about is motion tile. Let me show you how I set this up. What I'm going to do is create a new solid. We'll just make it 1920 by 1080. That's fine. And we're just going to turn on our safe title, safe action. I'm just going to zoom all the way in. And I don't want this circle to be very big at all. Probably about that big. Okay. And we're just going to position it right dead in the middle of the screen. Because what we're going to do is once we have this circle, you'll see uh, that's even a little bit too big, I think. And if we want to shrink this down, what we can do is with our mask selected. I can just right click. I can come down to mask path and shape and we're just going to do a free transform here. We'll just shrink this down a little bit like that. Just reposition it again because I need it to be nice and small and that will probably do the trick. Perfect. All right. I'm just going to turn off my saves here just so I can actually see that dot. Perfect. Let's now take this and pre-comp it down. Command shift and C, control shift and C for everyone on Windows. We're going to call this dot grid. Okay, I'm going to say OK. And once we have it shrunk down, I'm going to want to use Motion Tile. But the only problem is, is that if I apply Motion Tile now, it's going to do the Motion Tile based on a 1920 by 1080 frame size. And I don't want that. What I want to have it based on is a 90 pixel by 90 pixel frame size, just about like that. So now when I come back, and what I should probably do here is we're just going to rename this comp Doom Opening. Okay, and I'm now going to take this element and we're just going to type in motion tile. I'll take motion tile. We're going to drag it and drop it. And what we want to do with the motion tile effect is adjust the output width and height. All I'm going to do is take it, just drag it out like such. We're going to take it, we're going to drag it north, and now we've just created our grid, just like that. Fairly quick, fairly simple. And 
not using any third-party effects to do it. Very cool. Okay. Now, one thing we might want to do with this grid, because the white is a little bit bright, I think I'm going to take this grid, and we're just going to change the solid color. I'm going to use Command, Shift, and Y to get in and change the solid settings. Control, Shift, and Y again for Windows. Let's just take this, make it a little bit on the grayer side. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So let's come back to our opening. This is looking much better. Now, one last thing I need to do before we get in and color this element is we're going to add a new black solid to our composition because this is going to be our vignette layer. Now, in a lot of times when I'm doing vignette effects, I use, like to use my safe title, safe action grid to get in and to use that as the reference, kind of like this. Just makes creating uniform shapes nice and simple. I'm going to invert that. We're now going to feather this out quite a bit like that. Nice. All right. Let's now get in and do a universal color change to this entire element. Now, again, we're going to do it using transfer modes. So what we're going to do, new solid color. I want to create the color of about blood red. So what I'm going to do is give my red value of about 225, and then we're just going to bring it south a little bit to about there. I think that's pretty good. This sort of gives us almost a blood red color that we're then going to get in and use an overlay transfer mode to now create our background element. Looking very nice. Okay, so this pretty much puts us at almost the halfway point for our animation. What we now need to do is to get in and add the text. Now, one thing that I love about, you know, the power of the internet is anytime you need to find a font, chances are what you can do is just head in to our good friend at Google, and I'm going to type in Doom font, okay? And the font that I used is called, appropriately enough, Amaze Doom. And you can see there is the font right there. Great for both Mac and Windows. You can download it 100% free to follow along with this lesson. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to my text tool. I'm going to type in Doom. Okay. And I'm going to reposition the text just to get it down here. Now, you'll notice that my anchor point is way down south. So I'm just going to use the Pan Behind tool to center it up. Now, one thing that you will notice about the font is that it doesn't quite look the way that we need it to. You'll notice the point in the D is on the wrong side. I actually need it to be on this side out here. The point on the M is fine and the two O's look like they're okay, but how do we get in and switch that D around? Well, the great thing about this font is this font knows that in certain cases you're going to want certain letters to be justified certain ways. So you'll notice that right now with this font, I have it set to be right, Amaze Doom right. What I'm going to do with this one letter is I'm going to switch it to Amaze Doom left. And there we go. Now what we can do, and I'm just going to increase the size of this in general here. There we go. Let's just bring it south a little bit here. We're almost there. Is I'm going to take the two center letters and we're just going to shrink them down a bit. Because I'm going to reposition them right up here almost so that it looks like they're supposed to fit right in between our D and our M. Now, if we want to make any adjustments to size, we could just do it with the scale command and we can position this where we need it to. Now, I could leave this the way that it is, but I'm going to do one last thing just to spice this up just a little bit so that I can make the text almost look like it's been torn through. I'm going to use a texture to cut out this text. Now, the easiest way to find a texture is you could probably just go to Google, type in grunge seamless texture, download something and use that. And the best part is, is that if it is seamless, you can use that motion tile trick I just showed you to extend it out to the edge of the frame. Now, this is the one situation where I'm going to use a third party effect here just to create our grunge look. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to use BCC's grunge effect. Now, what's very cool about this grunge effect that I'm going to show you is the technique that I'm going to show you to create the actual grunge is going to work no matter what element that you've used. In this case, I'm going to use this element right here. But what I need it to be is I need it to be white with these scratches to be a very dark color. So let me show you how I'm going to go about doing this. And keep in mind that no matter what element that you're using, you can use this exact same technique that I am about to show you. Okay, the first thing I need to do is to make this element black and white. So I'm going to come into the effect. I'm just going to turn the color on 
And inside of the color dropdown, we're going to take our saturation, we're going to put it down at negative 100 so that everything is black and white. Again, follow along with your texture so you'll get the same type of end result. What I'm going to do now is take the brightness and just bring it right up. And then we can play with the contrast a little bit just to give this element a very scratchy look like that. Okay. Now you can see that if I come up and I turn the color element or the color aspect on and off, it's a huge difference from the before and after. But again, this same technique will work really with any element that you may have downloaded off the internet that you want to use inside of your production, okay? Obviously, just make sure that you have the rights to use that element before you just download it and use it in anything that you want. Okay, so let's take this element now. And I think the one last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust it because I have the ability to do that inside of this effect just to get rid of a lot of that heavy scratches from the bottom there because what I'd like to do now is just bake this element into this layer by doing it as a pre-comp. Let's just call this grunge. And I'm going to say, okay. Now, what I now need to do is that I could simply take this element and say, oh, okay, well, let's just use this as an alpha mat. And there's our element. Perfect. We're all set to go, except for one problem. In the original animation, when I saw it, we could actually see through these scratches. They weren't black. They were actually an alpha channel to the background. So how do we go about creating that? Well, we've actually gone one step ahead of ourselves here. I'm just going to put that grunge layer back on top and I'm going to make another layer that's a white solid. I'm going to say OK. And we're just going to turn off our track mat here for a second because I actually want to use this white solid and use the grunge layer as the track mat. What we're going to do is do it as a Luma mat. You'll see that if I switch to the Luma mat grunge, it doesn't look like anything has actually happened, but it has. Take a look at what is going on in here. You'll notice that as I turn the grunge layer back on, that's no longer transparent. If I turn it off, you'll see the track mat is now doing exactly what we want it to do. We're actually now cutting through to the background. So what we're going to do is do one last pre-comp here. We're going to call this final grunge see through element. Okay. Once we have that, we can now take that. We can now use our doom element as our alpha track mat. And you'll see now there is our doom element with the ability for us to see right through the grunge into the background. And if we think that the grunge is not enough or we want to reposition it, we have the ability to do that right here. Now, one thing that I always like to do just for my own peace of mind is I will normally take this grunge element and I will parent it to the text element. So then I can take the text element and move it. And that grunge element will move right alongside it. Okay. Now, one last thing that I just like to throw in as an added bonus is that if you happen to have a camera shake element that you'd like to use, now is the perfect time to apply it. So you're going to get a bit of a sporadic camera shake happening in here. What I like to do to create this effect is I like to create a new adjustment layer. And with this adjustment layer, I like to use Twitch from Video Copilot. Okay. Now again, chances are with whatever effects packages you happen to have installed, and if you don't have them installed, keep in mind you can create your own camera shake effect by simply creating a null object, parenting these elements to the null object, and just moving the null object around sporadically to create that camera shake effect. All I'm going to do is just create a very generic one. We're going to create a speed or an amount of five. We're just going to turn all of our elements on here. And now when I come back to preview this, you'll see that what we now have is our final doom element all set to go. And at its core, this animation is really made up of an animation combination of a few different embers elements, one cloud element, and a very cool stylized font that we downloaded from the internet with a few little extra bells and whistles thrown on top just to spice it up a little bit. Now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements to work with, you can head on over to 4kfree.com and to check out our entire product line and some great tutorials to get you up and running nice and quick, you can check us out at rampantdesigntools.com.